Iranian miners have been rushing to meet the surge in demand for nuclear power to keep AI data centers running. Our Pippa Stevens took three planes, traveled more than 2,600 miles over more than 15 hours to remote northern Saskatchewan, Canada, to get an inside look at the world's highest grade uranium mine. Also, she is standing in minus 18 degree weather. Pippa? <laughs> Yeah, Melissa, and if you couldn't believe it, it was actually colder earlier in the day. But down in the mine, it's much more comfortable, a relatively balmy 40 degrees. And we got an inside look at just how Cameco mines this valuable but very challenging uranium deposit. This is one of Cigar Lake's active development regions. So this big drill blasts about two to four meters every single day. And after that happens, all of that rock has to be brought back up to the surface. Cigar Lake developed a specialized jet boring system to access this very high grade of uranium. The system runs along these tracks so that they can move it along the length of this tunnel. This is the jet boring system that was developed for Cigar Lake. And this is the only place in the world where this type of machine is used. Behind me is the water pump station, the specialized jet boring system developed here at Cigar Lake requires highly pressurized water in order to access those ore cavities. It's traveling at about 15,000 PSI. This is where all of the ore slurry that contains the uranium is pumped. This machine called the clam then drops down and picks up the uranium from the bottom and then sends it back for grinding before it's eventually pumped up to the surface. And Melissa, that tower over there, that is Mineshaft 1. That's the elevator that we were in. It can hold up to 40,000 pounds. And all those shots you saw from underground, all of those are right below my feet here. It's just, this is just spectacular, Pip. I mean, it's amazing reporting here. Um, how much can Cameco decide to just turn up production? And how much of the mining is thanks in part to Techno technological developments. We've seen that, and you cover the oil industry, we've seen that in oil drilling that more and more is accessible because of technology. So on the first point here at Cigar Lake, it's about 18 million pounds per year. They have no plans to increase the amount of output. They do have the lease here until 2031 with plans to extend that through to 2036. However, at their MacArthur River plant, which is close by, that is the largest in the world. It's currently at 18 million pounds per year. It could go up to 25 million pounds. I did ask Chemico CEO Tim Gitzel about that. It seems like there are some plans in the, work, in the works there, but nothing quite set yet thanks to there not being enough of a pricing signal just yet. Now, on your second point, so the jet boring system you saw in that video, that was developed specifically for this site for two reasons. It's because the sandstone above the uranium-rich ore is too weak, so you can't access it from above. Most mining, most fracking comes from above or from the side. This one goes down below, and so all of it is done remotely. It's all done by AI. Also, after they mine each cavity, they move to other tunnels to look for ore. They can balance out how rich that ore they've already mined is. So when they send it to the mill down at McLean Lake, it's a relatively consistent product they're sending. So they're using a lot of technology, a lot of AI to really inform how they're drilling this location. So everything is done remotely. You made a point in an earlier hit, uh, which I heard, Pippa, that the Wi-Fi down there is great. And that's probably because they have to operate all this machinery <laughs> using Wi-Fi. That's right. Yeah. So they're connected everywhere and there's a really elaborate safety system. So everyone is always in touch. It's not just the Wi-Fi. There's also, you know, the old school walkie talkies just to make, make sure all systems are a go. But it really is, you know, a, a glorious mine. As one person told me, he called it the Rolls Royce of mines simply because it is so high tech and there is so much light. The air ventilation system is of such a high quality because, of course, when you do mine for uranium, you worry about the radon that's being released as the material decays. And so their air ventilation system is working overtime to make sure everyone down there is safe. And they even have sidewalks along the roadways. And so uh, it feels a bit like the New York City subway.